The president of Rwanda has uh, been able to remove term limits. He said Rwandans demanded it. And now he has announced that he is going to seek another term. Is this what Rwandans want? Rwandans want uh, a democratic and prosperous Rwanda. You know, they need the government to be held accountable. Uh, but, but in the first place, the whole uh, constitutional uh, amendments and the whole process of that and uh, the, the referendum of 98% shows you exactly what happened. We, we have a society in Rwanda where uh, the whole society is living in fear and uh, there is no freedom of speech, expression, uh, nobody in the country can actually stand up and uh, give their own ideas of uh, the way forward when it comes to the constitutional rights of, of the country. But they say that Frank Habineza, who is the opposition leader <coughs> of the Democratic Party, is free, he opposes the government, he goes out of the country, he speaks freely, and nobody has touched him. Yeah, but what the, what's the impact? What has uh, Frank Habineza, the Green Party, what, what have they really achieved? They tried to uh, decampaign the referendum or the constitutional changes. Uh, but look, what happened? They gave him... Uh, between the approval by the uh, parliament and the referendum date, it was about four days. Could you actually have enough time to go around Rwanda and educate people about the changes in the constitution and thereafter come to a, a, a vote whereby probably you're going to cause change? And it's not about the Green Party. Talk about other opposition parties, the so-called opposition parties in, in, in Rwanda. But some of them asked for the president to run for a, a, a another term because he brings stability, development, peace, among other issues that he makes people feel that they are part of a democracy. You, you doubt that? Uh, exactly. That answers our question. Why should a, uh, an opposition party ask uh, uh, Kagame to continue running? Why do they have parties in the first place? They are there to challenge the government. Probably they have different parties because they don't agree with the RPF. But they are the same people asking the RPF candidate to continue leading. Why? Because of the, the uh, extraordinary uh, uh, killings and disappearances and assassinations that have happened in the past, and they are still ongoing. So the RPF candidate, or the president for that matter, decides... Uh, for each and every opposition party, who is going to get a place, who is going to be in the parliament, who is going to be an ambassador, to the extent that he actually uh, gets a leader of a, a political party, an opposition party, and sends him to, to be an ambassador somewhere. An example is uh, uh, Mitari. But the government said over four million people unanimously petitioned the parliament to have the constitutional amendment. And because of that, <coughs> The president also said that Rwandans are free to decide what they want to do, and they decided there is a need for constitutional amendment because of the stability he brings to the country. Why do you, why do you doubt that? First of all, there's no democracy because there's no way we, we, we are going to measure this without freedom of speech and expression and media. See what he has done to the media. The radios and TVs we have in the country, they are all run by uh, the RPF. There are a few who could say this and this, and it's just a matter of time here. Everybody is missing. Some of these journalists have been missing. Others are found dead. Others just, you know, accidents uh, and so on. So once we can't uh, hold um, uh, this government accountable, once we don't have independence towards the, the branches of government, uh, the judiciary and uh, the, the parliament, then... Uh, this is all from Kagame. He runs everything. RPF controls everything. The success story they are talking about, the economic story they are talking about, is a fallacy.